Welcome back to the Credible Dev YouTube channel. It's been a minute since I made a video. I apologize for that. Um, we've gained quite a few subscribers since the last time I made a video. We're up to around 800 subscribers. And I really appreciate your support. Even though I haven't been posting videos, I do plan to kind of correct that going into the future. I'm still trying to determine what the future of the channel is and the type of videos that I would make, which I'll get more uh, into that later in the video. But the purpose of this video was to talk about Navarro and whether I was still using it or not. Some people had posed that question on the previous video, so I figured I'd make an update to talk about whether I was still using it. And for those of you paying attention to my screen here, you probably notice the launcher icon that I am still using Navarro. And overall, my experience has been great with it. I do want to preface that with the fact that I probably don't use it the way that many other people do. Because the point of this distribution was to kind of be centered around gaming. And I don't do a lot of gaming. I do a little bit of it. Uh, some Battle.net gaming, uh, which I have set up on here, but I don't do it very often. But when I have used it, it's worked perfectly fine. It did take a little setup with Battle.net. Battle.net's kind of, of wonky uh, as far as things you have to do to get it working. But overall, if you follow the guides that are out there, you can get it working, no problem. And also Xbox Cloud Gaming, which I really don't do very often, but a few times that I have used it, it worked perfectly fine too. And, you know, I don't really expect for it not to just because of the way the cloud gaming stuff works. It's, it's pretty straightforward and doesn't really involve a lot of the, the system itself as far as making it work. So I just wanted to point that out that I don't use it the way that a lot of other people probably do. What I do use it for is for development work, like with the VS Code, some database work. Um, you can see I have like uh, dBeaver running, which I use for a lot of the, um, the database stuff and Insomnia and Postman for API things. And for all those uses that I have for it, including recording these videos with OBS Studio and using Caden Live, all of that works perfect in the bar. And it works perfect in a lot of other distributions too. I just want to say that. Uh, but I'm not a customizer of my Linux install. I just don't have time for that, and that's not why I necessarily use a Linux. It's not for, you know, digging in and doing all these crazy customizations that you see a lot of other people on YouTube do. I don't have time for that. I have work to do. I'm doing my work, and I need a functional Linux distribution that feeds some of the needs with, uh, you know, giving me the latest packages which Flatpak has really came through on a lot of that stuff it's that was a great advancement for linux and the ecosystem i really love flat uh, flat packs but like i said overall everything's been great i did do the update uh from version 37 of nabar to 38 and one key thing that happened during that update had to do with flat packs that they dropped the um, Fedora repo for flat packs. So in doing that, any flat packs that you had installed from that Fedora repo, you needed to remove them and add them back, which was fairly straightforward to do. Uh, when you go into the package manager, the Nabara package manager, and you go to flat packs, there's a little icon here that kind of tells you where this one came from. And I only had like one or two that came from the Fedora repo. So I just deleted those and, and installed them back. Which brings up one point. It's kind of an annoyance thing. It's not a big deal with the package manager when it comes to flat packs. Is how you go about adding them. It would be much more intuitive if down here or up here somewhere there was a little search icon like you have for the regular packages that aren't flat packs. You, know, you can click this and you can search for whatever you're you're looking for and with flat packs it's this little add button which i get it i mean it, it works most people are going to figure it out it just might be a bit more intuitive if it were a search icon 
Because when you pull this up, you do have a little search icon here, and you can search for whatever flat pack that you're wanting to install. So it's not a big deal. It's just a bit of an annoyance with uh, the package manager. But the package manager in general, it works pretty well. I haven't had too many issues with it. I've been able to install the things I needed to install with very little issues. And uh, overall, like I said, the, the update to 38 went pretty smoothly. And also, like I've said, I just haven't had any issues with it. I've had some urges to kind of go back to Manjaro for whatever reason, but I, there's just really not a reason to. This uh, Nobara works perfect. I don't have any issues with it and my day-to-day -day stuff with OBS and Caden Live and all that kind of stuff. It just all works. So I'm very happy with Nobara and I don't foresee myself moving to another distribution. Uh, it's just not worth the time when this one works perfect for me. There are a couple of apps that I want to talk about real quick that I found recently that you might also find interesting or useful. One of them is called Minitext. And this is Minitext you hear, you see here on the screen. And it's, it's basically like a scratch pad. It doesn't do any rich text stuff, so you're not going to get any formatting or anything like that. I mean, it's just like taking quick notes, which... I do a lot when uh, I'm doing development work or, you know, research on anything. I might make some quick notes. It's not going to save the notes or anything like that. I mean, you can copy and paste into it. You can type into it, and <laughs> that's about it. But you can, uh, if you right-click on it here, you can set it to be always on top, which I typically have it set to be always on top. That way I can pop around in different windows, and it's always there for me to type in. And this uh, always on the visible workspace, which can be handy uh, if you have multiple workspaces. And when you switch to another workspace, then it stays on top. So that could be pretty handy. The other one is called Mission Center. And Mission Center, it still has a couple issues. I was looking at their GitLab earlier. Um, there's some memory leak issues that they're still working on, but it's pretty active development. And if you're familiar with Windows Task Manager, this is going to look really familiar to you. <laughs> I mean, it basically looks just like Windows Task Manager. Uh, but pretty handy tool. I mean, there's obviously other tools out here that, that do that already. Some built into the Linux OS, depending on the, the uh, desktop environment that you're using. You'll have different ones. But, I mean, it's there already. I just thought this was interesting because it looks basically like task manager from windows so if you're really familiar with um the, with task manager with most of you probably are at some point in your life uh you might feel much more at home with something like this uh both of these apps mini text and mission center are in the flat hub repo so you can install it on whatever uh linux distro that you're using as long as you got flat pack set up but you might want to check those out so now uh, I want to talk a bit about the future of the channel. And, you know, looking back at the videos that I've posted, the most popular videos revolve around Proxmox and Portainer and things like that. And what I want to know is, are those the kind of videos that you're looking for? Are those the kind of videos that you enjoy from me and the way that I talk about them? Or are you looking for something else? I uh, most certainly am not doing distro reviews. Uh, plenty of other people do that out there, and that's great for them. But, I mean, that to me, it's just silly. So I have no interest in doing distro reviews, uh, like where I'm posting a different video every time a new distro comes out. That's just not who I am. So not going to be doing that. Now, um, more on a personal side and things that I would like to make videos about. I just don't know the interest level that's out there. Um, you know, my day job, I work pretty much solely with Windows and the Azure um, ecosystem and, and everything that has to do with Microsoft. Uh, VMware, like vCenter and Horizon and things like that. I have a lot of experience with those, and I'm just not sure where the interest lies with viewers. So any kind of input there, type of videos that you would want to see uh, based on my experience, like professional experience, things like that. Maybe it's development 
uh, you know, Node.js and React and APIs and MySQL and stuff like that. I can do videos about that. I have experience with those things. I just need to know from you guys what it is that you have interest in so then I can kind of tailor my videos around things I like to talk about, but also serve a purpose and help you guys out as well. So if you could leave some feedback down in the comments about the type of videos that you'd like to see, I'd really appreciate it. And again, you know, that's going to be it for this video, but I do want to thank you again to all the new subscribers. I really appreciate it, especially since I haven't been posting videos lately. And I promise you're going to see more videos from me in the future. And it's not going to be like three months down the road. So again, thank you to everybody. And that's all I got for you today. I hope everybody has a great week. Thanks for watching. See ya.